Center of Mass and Conservation of Momentum. First, let's look at a definition of center of mass. The center of mass of an object or system is the point where all of the mass could be located and the system would operate the same way. A close and isolated system's center of mass continues to move at a constant velocity as a net sum of the motion of the parts of the system. This is evidence of conservation of momentum. First, let's take a look at some objects and uh, with the concept of center of mass. You may have seen these little toy birds like this where you could balance the birds on the tip of your finger with their beak. Now in this particular bird, what you don't notice is that there are weights in the wing tips here and here so that the center of mass of this whole bird, which appears visually to be back here somewhere, is actually right exactly centered on the beak because of the extra weight here and here. Notice also this gymnast, as the gymnast is flying, uh, the center mass of the gymnast, which is around uh, their belly button, or maybe a little bit above their belly button, if we track their belly button through their motion here while, while they're both flipping and twisting, what we will see is that their center of mass follows this parabolic trajectory and is very simple, sim simplified motion if we just look at the gymnast's center of mass. Same thing is true for this hammer that's been thrown and is uh, rotating. If we take a look at the center of mass of the hammer, which is right here, uh, um, closer to the hammer head than it is the handle, and we plot along every time the hammer was moving, we plot exactly where the center of mass was, we would see that it would follow this nice simple parabolic trajectory rather than a complex rotational motion that you see visually. And finally, one of my favorites is a boomerang, because if you look at a boomerang here, the center of mass is actually not even located on the boomerang itself. It's uh, kind of in the middle right down in here, and that's the pivot point when it's thrown in the air, and one of the reasons that it uh, comes back to you when you throw it properly. So these are examples of center of mass of a particular object. Now let's take a look at uh, some systems and their center of masses. Uh, let's start off with this top system right here. Let's say we had two objects, one with mass m1 and one with mass m2, which is a smaller mass. Uh, if we were going to balance these two masses with on a rod maybe that connected these two together, you wouldn't put your finger right in the very center because mass 1 being greater than mass 2 would cause, if your finger was here, would cause it to tip toward M1. But if you were going to balance these two, you would put your finger somewhere right over here, closer to M1 than you would M2. How much closer? Actually, it's an in, uh, in inverse proportion to the ratio of the masses. So let's say that this mass is three times more massive than this one. So M1 is three times more massive than M2, then you put your finger three times closer to M1 than you would to M2, and that's why you'd put it right here. So this would be the center of mass of the system that contained those two masses. Taking a look at these, let's say there was an explosion. We had parts flying apart here. What we would see is if we took the relative mass of these different objects and how far they have flown apart once they exploded, that their center of mass would have been right in the very center. And it still is. If you balanced all of these, it would still be balancing in the very center right here. So let's take a look at our last system here. And in our last system, we have a motorcycle rider and a motorcycle, and they're combined at first. And so the center of mass is about right here. And as a rider is flipping, the center of mass is still right between the rider and the bike. But now as the rider starts to come away from the bike, the center of mass starts to move a little bit. And then when the rider flies off the bike, the center of mass, if we looked at this, would be about right here. And the center of mass between these two the bike and the rider would be about right here and so forth. And what we would see is the center of mass of this system, even though the system is quite dynamic, the center of mass would follow this parabolic trajectory as if 
this was still one single particle flying, even though they have separated and are flying apart. And that's the power of center of mass, is it shows where all of the system's mass would follow the simplest form of motion. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of center of mass. There is a point for a moving two-puck system that moves in a straight line. This point is located where the two pucks will just balance. It is called the center of mass. It is the place where all the mass of the system can be thought of as located. As you can see, the center of mass point here is more toward the red or, and more massive puck than the uh, yellow one. And again, that's where that if you track that white spot, it goes along in a straight line, even though the pucks are rotating about themselves. Let's watch a little bit of that again. There is a point for a moving two-puck system that moves in a straight line. This point is located where the two pucks will just balance. It is called the center of mass. Let's check out this other system. This is my favorite because it's going to be an oscillating, rotating, and translating system uh, with the spring connecting these two pucks, but the center of mass will just cruise along as if it's just one single object. Pretty cool. Now let's look at explosions with center of mass. Let's so we have two carts back to back and they're gonna push off of each other and their initial momentum is each zero. So the initial momentum of the system is zero, uh, right here with conservation momentum. Then as they explode, they each receive an impulse and if they have equal mass, they'll both go with an equal momentum and equal velocity off in both directions but their center of mass stays in the very center right here. So in the words of the balance point between these two masses would be here, and the balance point between these two masses would be here. And so if we look, the center of mass never moves. It started uh, here and it stayed there. And that shows that the initial momentum of the system being zero, the final momentum of the system is also gonna be zero at any other point in time. So this is where center of mass really does show uh, and is evidence for conservation of momentum. So let's take a look at a video of an explosion here between these three pucks. They are all magnetically uh, repelling from each other and so when the torch uh, releases them they'll explode away from each other and they all have equal mass so let's see that they'll all move away with equal momentum. Add the velocity vectors for the three identical pucks to get the motion of the center of mass. As you can see, at any given point, right here is the center of mass, but then if you look at these three different pucks going off at this point, here and here, they would still balance it in this center. And then if they were here, here, and here, they would still have the center of mass balanced in the very center. So the center of mass was motionless to begin with, and it remained motionless even after it exploded. So let's look at center of mass with an elastic collision. So remember our conservation momentum worked with this before. So this cart's coming in, and right now the balance point's right here between their masses. Then when they collide, this cart finally gets over here and collides, the center of mass is here. And then afterwards, this one, this cart stopped and this cart kept going, and so their center of mass is here and then here. Notice that the center of mass was moving and the center of mass continued to move with a constant velocity the whole time. That's evidence of conservation of momentum. The motion of the center of mass before and the motion of the center of mass after this interaction was the same. Let's take a look at elastic collisions and center of mass in action. Note the motion of the center of mass of this two-puck system. And so let's check that out. 
to begin with, there was one puck here and one puck here. They have equal masses, and therefore their center of mass, it's kind of hidden right now, but it was right there, that little dot right there. And then the next picture, this puck had moved to here. This puck was still there, so the center of mass is right here. And then what, right when they, uh, right after they collided, this one and this one, the center mass is there. And then the next picture is here after an equal interval of time, and there's the center of mass. Then here, and then here, and that's the center of mass, and then finally there, and that's the center of mass. So if we look at that, the motion of the center of mass is the same before and after the interaction. Even though these objects are going in different directions uh, here, the center of mass just kept cruising as if nothing happened. And that's evidence of conservation of momentum. And we have one more example for our completely inelastic collisions showing conservation of momentum. Remember in those collisions, here's the center of mass between our two equal massed objects uh, right there. Now in these collisions, uh, after they've interacted, with Newton's third law here and received an equal impulse, then they stick together and they keep cruising together. Well, you'll notice here that the conservation of momentum uh, is evidenced by this center of mass continuing to move uh, with a constant velocity. And so let's look at inelastic collisions and center of mass. Even in an inelastic collision, the center of mass moves in a straight line. How can you explain the rotation of the pucks around each other? That's kind of cool. The pucks uh, beforehand were cruising. They hit and stuck and actually rotated, and yet the center of mass kept cruising as if nothing ever happened, showing conservation of momentum. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.